Okay, let's talk about the different hat brands. Um, all the hat brands that I know and um, the ones I like um, and what's good about them. And um, just so, let's say you're a new guy who's just kind of starting to get into hats and stuff and you just want to know what's out there. Um, you could be a guitar guy and know the sort of basic lay of the land. You've got the Gibsons, you've got Fenders, you've got Gretsch and uh, Rickenbacker and a few other things, you know. Uh, Eddie Van Halen's got his line and, uh, you know, there's this line and that line. The Schechter line, the Music Man has a great line. Um, you know about Squires or being the cheaper version of Fender. They're made in Asia, you know about Gibson, has Epiphone, which is like their kind of cheaper Gibson, you know, uh, made in Asia. So, you know the sort of lay of the land, like what's out there, what's uh, old, what's trendy, what's a classic, um, and uh, what some of your choices are. Now we're going to talk about hats, where um, it's kind of the same deal. There are some classic brands, and then there's some like you know brands from different countries that are really interesting and stuff. There are some local brands, like uh, Capis Headwear from New York is really cool. They carry all the classics, you know, like classic Panamas, classic coconuts. They have the classic boater from Italy, classic newsboy with the snap, little baggy one. They have the the Big Apple, which nobody sells. You know, they have a stingy pork pie. It's like a little one and a half inch brim and a really low, low crown. They make all this, you know, like a wool Hamburg and a wool derby made in USA for like, a, you know, a hundred bucks. Really nice, classic, classically designed, decent stuff, not budget stuff, but not expensive either. Good entry level, like authentic classics, you know. Uh, they make cotton buckets that we used to use on the handball courts, you know, and stick a toothpick in the side. They got all that stuff. Um, and Capus, they're the ones who have them. Nobody else has stuff like Big Apples, you know, um, and uh, Italian boaters. And then they have a Panama boater, too. They have a classic Panama with all these great features. It's a fantastic company that makes hats, caps, summer, winter, felt, straw everything and they're right here from New York um, so there are actually really good local brands as well as brands in Europe and Australia and everything so we're going to talk a little bit about it and like everything else good in life um, there's a price to pay you gotta listen to me um, playing my new guitar which I'm right now holding up to the monitor basically for me to enjoy it's almost like a mirror I'm looking at it Let's look at the binding a little See, this is what keeps me fresh, you know? Now I could tune into this uh, video and watch pictures of my guitar and hear how the tone is. You're like, oh wow, it's got a good pickup here, good pickup there, it's good for that. And, uh, so, you know, I kind of enjoy these videos too, and mostly the guitar parts, I have to say. Um, the hat parts, you know, it's kind of a love, but it's also the same lines, you tend to repeat them for 25 years and so you know kind of like it, it gets a little autopilot you know if you know what I mean um, but yeah I mean I do definitely still have a love and a passion I'm so passionate about the hat um, yeah I don't know what to say after that um, if I put my glasses on the amp I'm gonna lose them so let's, let's put them here all right um, yeah, I told my my uh, some of my viewers that I would play some songs for them. My song choice for today is going to be uh, "Suspicious Minds," and it was a uh, request from uh, somebody I know, a uh, film director named Luigi Tunnel, um, who is a fellow YouTuber. Actually, a YouTuber like me, but not exactly like me. He's got a comedy channel, and um, it's pretty cool. It's um, Kind of like for older kids, I would say, you know, um, there's no dirty words or anything, but, you know, some of the subjects are mature, you know, like mafia and like, uh, you know, uh, sometimes somebody will get assassinated, like, you know, some action type stuff, you know, like, you know, but it's all pretty harmless and, uh, you know, we have 
every holiday we do things centering around the holidays and stuff. And I'm always helping him out. Um, I do a little bit of acting. Uh, I act, you know, I do some parts and I help sometimes with the scenery and the artwork and even sometimes with the editing. But um, it's 90% him. Uh, Luigi Tunnel has his own channel. And um, it's called Luigi Tunnel featuring Frank Berenger, the Prairie Dog, something like that. So if you, it used to be called Luigi Tunnel Play Channel, but now it's Luigi Tunnel with Frank Berenger, the Prairie Dog. So if you put that on, you'll find it. Uh, maybe I'll put a link below. But anyway, it's, uh, it's comedy, so if you want to subscribe to him, um, I'm sure he'd be real uh, happy about that. He's kind of a newer YouTuber and uh, a young one. He's only doing it for like a year. But I'm only doing this for about two years, seriously, and then like maybe three total or something. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, new is a relative term. But anyway, uh, my friend Luigi Tunnel from, uh, you know, my other job, this film director guy, he um, requested a song. And uh, I'll, I've never played it, so I'm going to try it. It's called uh, Suspicious Minds, so let's try it. Shot. My wireless editors. There it is, right? And I need to get a cable. <laughs> it's got one light. Thank you. 
So I, I won't dry your tears, tears from your eyes, and I don't let a good thing die. You know I never lie. Yeah, yeah. Caught in the trap. You know that cat The get from ginger hats and to me from ginger hats and to me Here and stuff, and I uh, sorry I butchered that Elvis song. I should have practiced it once. Uh, I'm too cocky, cocky. I thought I could handle it, you know. Just falling in a trail. Oh, girl, it comes I love too much. some of those brands now. Um, we all we all know Stetson. Okay. Stetson is probably the most um, talked about brand out there. Um, everybody knows it, you know, people from different countries come in. People from Tibet love Stetsons. Uh, they're crazy about them. People from Nepal crazy about it. It's part of the culture. They wear them with their uh, traditional garb and stuff. Um, only certain types, you know, mostly Western hats, um, and never in black. Generally, like a light sand color, you know, like acorn or silver belly. Even uh, they like the dune. Uh, the Pawnee is probably the most popular model in uh, that part of Asia. The Pawnee, the dune, and the rancher, and mostly an acorn and silver belly. Those are, like I said, it's a cultural thing and they look amazing and it's like a really cool thing that they come in because I get to, you know, meet people from Nepal and Tibet, which is a big kick for me, just, you know, seeing their name Sherpa on the credit card and everything. Now, um, Stetson is a name we all know. They are famous for basically inventing the cowboy hat. Uh, John B. Stetson, he's the guy who invented the cowboy hat. 
and he gave a lot of people work. He had a huge factory in Philadelphia, which was like, if you Google it and look at it, there are paintings of this place, um, you know, like, I don't know, in the 20s or something like that. And um, it's like a, not just a city block, it's like city block, city block, city block, one big, you know, complex and a whole bunch of other complexes. It, it was a whole city, basically. They employed like this whole area, this whole city, and there were schools and residences and just, you know, like here's a city block, city block, city block, city block, city block, city block. And the factory was like, you know, like that. It was huge. There was a, a lot of money in hats back then. Stetson was the biggest, the hugest, you know, the American name, and everybody knows it. They're famous for making Western hats, but they also make hats like my Stetson Temple. Uh, so dark in here, I could barely see which hat is which. Here's my temple right here. Uh, my Stetson Temple and Mink. Mink is the name of the brown shade. Um, they make stuff like this. They're very famous. If you look at old advertisements, you know, with Bing Crosby and George Raft and people like that, they advertise for Dobbs, for Stetson. There were many big brands back then. Um, um, one thing is Stetson is owned by another big company that also owns the company Dobbs. So if you see D-O-B-B-S, Dobbs Fifth Avenue, that is another line. Stetson is one line, Dobbs is another line. They come from the same place, the same factory. So you're essentially getting the same quality, made by the same people, the same stuff, same people made it in the same place out of the same materials. There's just different designs, different logos, you know, like different linings, and they stamp different names on it. But it's the same product, basically. And they own a couple of other lines, too. Uh, Resistol is a very famous uh, Western hat brand that they bought up, too. Uh, Resistol, Stetson, also Charlie One Horse, they were all purchased by the One Umbrella Company. And they're all good, they're all reliable, um, but it's a huge company. They also do licensing, so they sell hats that are made in other plants too. You know, they have their top line, the middle line, the lower, the lower, you know. They even have certain items made in China. Um, they have very nice things made in Mexico now. Really, really nice straws you can get for like $45, $65 and stuff, and $85. Where other Western straws from Stetson were double that, triple that, four or five times that. So the Mexican ones are good. Um, it depends on what you're getting. You know, Mexican palm leaf is very heavy and it actually takes rain. It will last you forever, you know. But, um, great brands. Um, I'm going to say the one thing about Stetson is their sizing can be a little bit erratic. Sometimes um, they run equal, kind of like they run true to size, but some of them run a little big, some don't. So, it's not the worst thing in the world, but, uh, Sometimes it actually helps because each one's a little bit different. Now, um, let's get to Akubra. Akubra is another brand that I love. I love their consistency and their ruggedness. Um, they have very good leather bands on the inside. They have uh, really nice, you know, silk linings. They have like a little plastic thing on the inside of the crown here to keep it from getting all yellow and stuff um, and faded and dirty. Um, it also keeps sweat from permeating through, so your head sweat won't actually make stains on the top and ruin your hat, giving you more longevity. Um, their felt is some of the only dress hats you could wear in the rain, like our Style Master or um, our Travel Hat from Akubra. You could go to jjhatcenter.com, and uh, it's usually at the top of all of my descriptions down there. Go to the website and yeah, anything by Akubra is generally very good in the rain. Where they won't really say that about any other felts. So they uh, invented a whole bunch of different machines and felt uh, making processes. And if you go to their website, Akubra, A-K-U-B-R-A, Akubra, um, they they did a lot of uh, inventing and you know they they kind of were isolated from other companies. And the way they made their felt is a little different. It's a little thicker, more rugged, and um, it tends to last long. It's known for lasting. Um, 
then again, most fur felts will. Stetsons will too. It um, depends on what you're buying. Western hats are going to last and last and last. They'll also be heavier, a little stiffer, and there's more of a break in. Uh, dress hats can last very long, but there is an upkeep. You have to reshape them, steam them every once in a while. Um, if you sweat through here every 10, 20 years or so, you know, you could change the bands. So there's a little upkeep, kind of like shining your shoes, where a western hat almost takes care of itself. You could get some packing tape, some just big sticky packing tape, the kind that you seal boxes with, make little rings of it and just pat down your felt. Western. And basically, uh, that's all you have to do. That's your only tool that's even better than a brush. Just get all the dust off. After that, you can done, you can brush counterclockwise on the top, counterclockwise here, 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 counterclockwise. Um, okay, from Akubra, let's move on. Celentino, um, they are a brand that's distributed by Tonak, T-O-N-A-K, maybe C-K. Uh, they come from the Czech Republic. Um, very, very nice stuff, though. Um, the Czech thing used to kind of, you know, but it's it's gorgeous, gorgeous stuff, and apparently this area of the world has a very long history of felt making and hat making, and there's a lot of good stuff. Um, most of the custom hats that you buy, really nice custom hats, the felt bodies, that piece of felt that people get is comes from the Czech Republic. Almost, you know, every ladies or men's hat that people buy felt, they, all those uh, millinery bodies and men's western dress bodies, the felt comes from Czech anyway. Uh, they just supply that stuff. So, um, yeah, you know, excluding, you know, major brands that have their own felt making on site. Uh, most of the smaller hat makers, you know, custom guys, individual people working at home, you know, they get their hats from like millinery supply places and felt supply. They all come from Czech anyway. It's good stuff, um, really reliable. It lasts and lasts. Um, they have a lot of really nice designs. Their stuff is very Art Deco, so it's very authentic in that 40s, clean, clean 40s designing. Um, they have some of the best band work in the business. Uh, they do some of the most colors of almost anybody. You know, crazy colors, like you know, wild colors. They do them all. It just depends on what people order. They also do the wild finishes, like velour, short hair, and long hair beaver. Um, they do them in Hamburgs, and you know, whatever you want. Um, it's just up to the people who order the hats to put these combinations together. Um, I love them. I think they're fantastic. They give you a lot of bang for the buck, um, a lot. They're not an American brand or as legendary as Stetson, but um, they're comparable. And they're definitely really nice. They're very classical, American-looking hats. But, um, you know, they have teardrops, where, like, most European brands don't do teardrops and stuff, but they do them with class. Um, every single aspect about this company is perfect. Their quality control, their selection, their designing, their felt quality, um, the consistency, there's not a bad thing I can say about them. Salentino is some of the best uh, bang for the buck out there you can get, I think. Um, let's talk about the JJ hats, like the Madrid, the Cyrus, the Seville, the Ken, the Valencia, the Natural. These all come from a custom company out in uh, Spain, in Seville, Spain. They are called Rocher. Uh, I forgot the full name. From, uh, uh, Fernandez de Rocher, Fernandez e Rocher. Look it up, you'll find it. Rocher hats with an accent at the end. Rocher comes from uh, Spain. You see them in a lot of places because they're growing and growing now. It's a very classy European felt maker that makes just like exquisite felt, but he also does regular grade stuff, you know, like that $200 grade kind of Stetson y stuff, $300, $400, you know. It was everything all the way down to even like, if you look in our cat catalog website, um, we have something called the Wool Seville, the Wool Cordoba, uh, not the Wool Madrid, I forgot what the third one is, the three inch brim. But um, they're not wool, they're 50% merino wool, 50% rabbit fur, and they feel so great. Um, they were 125 
now they're on half price sale for I think like 62 bucks or something like that and um, sometimes you catch them on a 30% off sale where you get the 62 plus 30% of that so it's incredible so you'll get this like you know $250 hat for like you know $40 or something um, incredible incredible stuff Rocher even their wool stuff, which is merino and rabbit, I like it. Um, I think they're consistent, they're tough, yet they're fine. Um, they have beautiful raw edges, gorgeous colors. Their designs are classical, very European, clean, um, cleaner than Stetson looking, perhaps not quite as authentically 40s and Art Deco y looking. They look a little bit more. I don't know, more Italian and modern looking, kind of like a Borsa look, less like a Stetson look. But um, to me, that's elegant. You know, like the green hat I wear, that's that shape. Um, the Seville is one of the best designed hats. They do run a little tight, though, so you got to go up one size in Rocher, um, which is common for a lot of European makers. Um, except Celentino, which tends to run a little big, actually. So you got to go up one whole size in Rocher gorgeous stuff. Uh, if you could find any of it at half price, like the Cordova. Uh, somebody was raving about the Cordova. I think he bought a bunch of them. It's essentially our two-inch brim with a welted edge, but super, super, super quality. So it's kind of like you're getting a Saxon, but it's beyond that. The quality is just like, you know, buttery. And instead of the same price as like the Ken in the $200 region, it's half that now. Um, and there's a merino rabbit version that's like 60 something i think too so the price is a nice 125 you know 62 for really good rocher felt and he's known for his felt that's basically how we found rocher we were getting some 100x beaver hats in from him some really expensive you know thousand twelve hundred dollar fedoras and we were, we were selling them to guys like Spader was buying them. I think it was on his TV show. I forgot what that was. You know, it was that blacklist, white collar, some color show. And um, he wore one, and you know, he and a whole bunch of different celebrities were wearing them. And people really dug them. They were spending a lot. So we got their little lower version stuff, and they just took off. So we decided to change our JJ custom line from, which used to be Biltmore, um, the old days, all of our JJ hats were built more, like when I first started working. We had a hat called the Nostalgia, Biltmore Nostalgia, the Biltmore Whippet, the Biltmore Bogart, you know, a whole other line we had. And my very first hat was a great Biltmore Whippet, actually. Um, fantastic. And then they came open crown, we shaped them ourselves, we made our own, like, authentic teardrops, real high ones. And it was a great era. Um, but when those became um, different, uh, they sold their business, went to the USA. We started uh, doing other companies, and Biltmore is still a strong company. We work with them, but um, we're doing other custom stuff. The custom stuff is supposed to be that you know really high end GQ kind of European. Mercedes band the stuff so we make sure whoever's making it is making like you know the best um, and for a while our custom line was Borsellino and then they kind of douched out too and you know so you know we're waiting for them to get uh, you know, different uh, stuff in and stuff but uh, right now the Rocher is very I use this word a lot consistent um, so sometimes you order something as a sample they come in different um, or ten hats come in one way and four of them come in a little different or you can't get enough product or you know there's consistency where you get lots and lots of product they always survive, uh, they always supply it and they never run out and they're all the same you know exactly what you're going to get no surprises so that was really good about them um, Rocher is definitely a classy classy company just remember to go up one size in everything you buy because they do run exactly one whole size too tight. Uh, some people have found that they run more, like a size and a quarter or a size and a half. I don't know about that. Um, 
if you feel you're in between sizes, then yeah, round it to the first one up and then add on a size. So if you're between 58 and 59, round it to the 59 and add on one 60. So it's like, you know, one and a quarter sizes or something. But uh, that should usually be good, not going up two sizes. But uh, I have heard that once or twice before, but, you know, once or twice out of like, you know, many, many, many other sales, dozens or hundreds, you know. Um, Rocher is great. McGill hats, wonderful stuff. Uh, McGill makes this like really thick felt. Uh, their silk finish stuff is all being blown out at half price. We had tons of it. We over-ordered. We had a silk finish in a derby, three colors, black tan and bluish gray, uh, a pork pie, black tan and bluish gray, a center crease medium brim hat, three colors, that's nine. Then we had a teardrop medium brim hat, 12 styles right there. And then we had a three inch brim, the untouchable, all silk finished, three colors. So uh, 15 styles. You know, and every style is like, you know, a wall likeness of hats, you know. And we had a, a huge, huge room just dedicated to these uh, silk finish hats. And um, we had to basically blow them out, and we were blowing them out pretty cheap, uh, half price. And um, there's nothing wrong with them. They're fantastic, fantastic hats. But we had them way too long. We ordered too many of them. So if you can get a hold of any McGill silk finish stuff, that's a steal right there. It's cost, it's half price. Um, really good stuff. Um, as far as other brands right now, I think I'm gonna stay right there. There are a couple of other brands that I do like, but I'm gonna stay with those two, because, with those that I've mentioned. And I think I can play you guys out and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Mm-hmm.